We are recording. Hello, I'm Paul Vanook from Recording Magazine. Welcome to our latest video review. Today, we're going to be taking a look at six AKG C-Series microphones, which you can also read about in our family of AKG C-Series microphones compared in the March 2023 issue of Recording Magazine. AKG was started in 1947 in Vienna, Austria as a supplier of cinema equipment and specialized audio components. AKG is short for Akustische und Kinogarata Gesellschaft, which translates in English as acoustic and cinema equipment. In 1949, AKG released its first headphone model, the K120DYN, and in 1953, the company released the world's first dynamic cardioid pattern microphone, the D12 which is the forerunner of today's ubiquitous D112 and the D12 VR. Also in 1953, AKG released the iconic C12 tube condenser. The C12 made use of the legendary brass CK12 capsule and featured nine selectable polar patterns on an external remote. In 1962, the C12 evolved into the compact AKG C12A, quickly followed by the C12B, which added a 20 dB pad on the body of the mic. The original brass CK12 capsule remained, but these new second generation C12 models implemented a miniaturized New Vista tube, which was seen as quite cutting edge at the time. As the microphone world transitioned to solid state designs in the late 1960s, AKG released the now extremely rare C412 microphone. The solid state C412 used the same body and capsule as the C12A and B mics. It was a three pattern mic with an omni, cardioid, and figure eight pattern switch on the body of the mic along with a two stage pad. In 1971, the AKG C414 was officially born. The original C414 was known as the C414COMB and added a fourth hypercardioid pattern option to the mic. In 1976, AKG released the popular and still sought after C414EB. This was the first version to implement the now familiar single piece body with a modern cannon connector and a three position bass roll off switch. Halfway into the life of the C414EB, AKG altered the CK12 capsule, changing its brass ring to a nylon ring. This of course affected the sound of the mic, resulting in a more neutral, less sparkly tonality. In the 1980s, the C414EB P48 added onboard 48 volt phantom power, while the C414B ULS introduced improved ultralinear electronics. In 1989, AKG said goodbye to the output transformer with the C414B TL for transformerless. The C414B TL2 was introduced in 1993 and featured the first capsule change in almost 20 years with the goal of capturing the sparkle of the original brass ring CK12. While some audio engineers loved the new brighter sound of the BTL2, others of course found it too bright. The AKG solution? Why not both? In 2004, the company released the sparkly C414B XL2 and the neutral C414B XLS, setting the stage for the C414 models still available today. Both mics featured newer streamlined bodies with digital controls offering five selectable polar patterns, a four position bass cut, four position pad, improved sensitivity, and lower self noise. The current C414 XL2 and C414 XLS arrived in 2009 and are sonically similar to the previous B incarnations. Various other AKG microphones have also carried the C designation over the past 60 plus years. Today you will find a selection of C-Series handheld vocal mics, miniature mics, drum mics, a shotgun mic, and others. The focus of this video will be AKG's current take on the classic C12 and C414 inspired models. This includes the C12 VR, the C414 XL2 and XLS, the C214, and the C314. 
We'll also take a look at the current version of the classic C451B pencil condenser as a bonus. Let's start with the current C414 options. The AKG C414 XLS and C414 XL2 are some of the most ubiquitous workhorse mics in the modern studio world. Beyond each microphone's color scheme and capsule voicing, they are essentially the exact same mic. The C414 XLS sports a matte silver mesh grille and matching lettering, while the C414 XL2 features a gold grille and styling. One difference between the current C414 offerings and their previous 5-pattern B-series incarnations is they now offer 9 selectable polar patterns. A digital pattern switch cycles through Omni, Wide Cardioid, Cardioid, Hypercardioid, and Figure 8 patterns with steps in between. Similar controls on the back step through the pad and the high-pass settings. Both models are a transformerless design with the same internal components. Each model uses a specifically tailored, current AKG C12 style capsule. The C414 XLS is more neutral and even, while the C414 XL2 is brighter and more open. I find the C414 XLS to be linear and neutral, with just enough top-end clarity to keep it from sounding dull or rounded. Yes, the mic can be described as vanilla, but we're talking about fresh, all-natural vanilla beans with no fillers, additives, or preservatives. A few years ago, I compared the current XLS to a vintage, late 70s, nylon ring C414 EB, and I found more similarities than differences, with the XLS being slightly brighter and more open. If you want to hear for yourself, you can check out the video comparison between these two mics and a vintage-flavored inspiration here on our YouTube page. When reviewer Paul Stamler took a look at the nearly identical C414B XLS in 2004, he called it a solid, unusually uncolored, unusually flexible, and impeccably professional large diaphragm microphone. I find those statements ring true today, and the AKG C414 XLS is probably the most used, set it and forget it, workhorse microphone in my studio. It works on just about anything. Moving to the AKG C414 XL2, Paul Stamler also had this to say about the AKG C414B XL2 in his 2004 review. The BXL2 tracked his BXLS tests quite closely, except that, as expected, everything had a brighter trouble. He also commented, Many bright mics I've tried sound terribly metallic. The XL2 didn't. I shied away from the XL2 for years due to its bright reputation, but I'm happy to report that my experience was similar to Mr. Stamler's. I would describe the AKG C414 XL2 as clear and detailed rather than simply bright. I would reach for the XL2 to bring darker sources to life or to highlight the picks and strums in an acoustic guitar, especially a nylon string classical model. Although it's probably not the mic that I would reach for on banjo or a brass instrument. Now, if piano is an instrument that you find yourself recording often, you need one or both of these mics in your collection, or better yet, you need more than one of both of these mics in your collection, with a slight preference tilting towards the C414 XLS on the versatility scale. Both mics come in a kit with an AKG H85 universal shock mount, a foam windscreen, a gooseneck pop filter, a cloth bag, all in a sound tool suitcase. Now we come to the AKG C214. Introduced in 2008, the AKG C214 is the most affordable entry in the C414 style world. The C214 maintains the flat, gently rounded, rectangular appearance of the line, finished in C-series dark gray. Most of the real estate on the C214 is taken up by a large, open, silver mesh grille that nicely shows off the capsule in the internal suspension mount. The C214 capsule here is a single-sided, fixed cardioid design. The C214 does offer pad and high-pass options with simple controls on the sides of the mic. The C214 comes with a small, compact briefcase, windscreen, and an H85 shock mount. The C214 is closest to the C414 XLS in its upper mid-range, but it adds a touch of weight balanced with a great top-end presence. 
When Darwin Gross reviewed the C214 in 2009, he said it captured a clear and balanced tone. The high frequencies were always open, while the mids consistently blew me away. Interestingly, he found that the cardioid pattern of the mic wasn't very tight, capturing a fairly broad sound field. After trying it on a variety of sources, from room mics, to vocals, to resonator guitar, to percussion and such, Darwin concluded that the C214 was a top-quality microphone that deserves consideration as a flexible and useful tool regardless of the size or budget of your studio. I agree that in almost any source, the C214 stands on its own as a nicely weighted, present, and affordable option in the AKG C414 family. Introduced in 2015, the C314 is essentially a multi-patterned version of the C214. The two mics share a body and accessory package. A big difference between the 214 and the 314 is that the 314 uses a similar dual diaphragm CK12 style capsule as the C414 models. The C314 offers four polar patterns of Omni, Cardioid, Supercardioid, and Figure 8. It retains the 20 dB pad of the C214, but its high pass filter is set at a different frequency. The C314 adds a new flavor to the C414 universe. Even in its cardioid pattern, it differs quite a bit from the C214. When I reviewed it in 2015, I noted that the C314 is a tad warmer in the high end than both the C214 and the C414 XLS. Sonically, the C314 is a big sounding mic with a gently thick fullness. Nicely, its top end still offers a nice hint of clarity. Over the years, I have regularly used a pair of C314 mics on drum overheads, toms, tambourines, shakers, acoustic guitar, cajon, female backing vocals, and Leslie cabinet. It's a very versatile and handy mic, but the C314 is definitely the most flavorful and vibey among the C414 options. In my opinion, the AKG C314 is definitely the sleeper of the C-Series lineup. Before we move on to what is arguably the star of the show, the AKG C12 VR, I want to take a minute to talk about the AKG C451B. Released in 1969, the AKG C451 Small Diaphragm Pencil Condenser was the company's first solid-state FET microphone. More of a system than a mic, the original C451 was a modular microphone consisting of a body, inline pads and filters, and an impressive collection of 10 polar pattern capsule options. Throughout the years, it came with differing mic connector options, one of which connected to an external 12 volt power supply before the standardization and implementation of 48 volt phantom power. The C451 system was discontinued in 1994. The current C451B was introduced seven years later in 2001, and it has remained unchanged ever since. The AKG C451B is a small diaphragm condenser whose narrow, bulletproof silver body incorporates a pair of recessed switches for a pad and high-pass filter. Moving away from its modular past, the updated Partioid CK1 style capsule is a fixed design. The C451B comes with a windscreen, mic clip, and a hard shell nylon zipper case. The C451B is voiced flat in the lows and mids with a broad high-end boost that offers a present dimensional airiness. Every source I tried with the C451B presented as neutral, honest, present, and open. This included acoustic guitar, mandolin, cello, ukulele, snare drum, hi-hat, overhead, tambourine, shaker, cajon, congas, djembe, and even male vocals, which is somewhere where I don't typically use a small diaphragm condenser. I was especially impressed by the tone, crack, and dimension it captured on a classic 1962 Ludwig snare drum and on hi-hat, where it made the chuff sound pleasant rather than biting. I also liked it as a spot mic on a ride cymbal. And of course, acoustic guitar and mandolin are a no-brainer with the C451B. Marty Peters had similar thoughts in his review 20 years ago with the summation. It lives up to common sense expectations regarding placement and resulting tonal yields. It delivers accurate sound, has indeed low handling noise, 
and the off-axis response isn't a tonal problem. This is the right tool for many professional applications. His co-reviewer, Martin Klingmeyer, reported, The C451B mics provided us with a piano recording that had a full round sound with a sense of real density. A detailed sound, but never harsh for an instant. The frequency response bump in the upper end of these microphones provided a sense of presence without becoming overbearing. This is the type of pencil condenser that every studio needs one, or better yet, a pair of. And luckily, AKG offers computer-matched stereo sets. Now we come to the AKG C12 VR, the company's current iteration of the classic C12. The C12 VR was introduced almost 30 years ago in 1994. Originally, it was made in Austria, while current offerings are crafted in Hungary. The C12 VR is a nine-pattern tube condenser. It is similar in style to its predecessor, but its emerald green body is an inch shorter than the original with a smaller gold head basket. The C12 VR is still based around a full-sized 6072 tube, and much of the design, layout, and circuitry remains similar to the original, but tweaked for improved noise floor and output levels. The transformer is an in-house design based on the original Hoff T14. And since the original brass and nylon CK12 capsules haven't been made in years, the mic uses one of the company's current CK12 style designs as well. The external N12 VR power supply is nicely compact compared to the power supply from the original C12, which also utilized a second remote pattern switching box. The new, smaller, rectangular offering includes a stepped, nine-position pattern control ranging from Omni to Cardioid to Figure 8, with six steps in between. You'll also find a three-step switch for the microphone's high-pass filter. Note that a three-position pad can be found recessed in the body of the mic. The microphone and the power supply come in a large, compartmentalized aluminum flight case. You also get a windscreen and a compact H15T shock mount. This new shock mount clings tightly to the mic body and is designed to remain attached to the C12 VR even when placed in the case. Sonically, the C12 VR is not a replica of the original C12, just like a C414 XLS is not a replica of a C414 EB. Since the beginning, AKG has been about pushing the sound and technology of its mics forward. That said, just as the 414 models have retained a solid, familial signature throughout the years, the C12 VR is squarely in the C12 family. The C12 VR exhibits great space and clarity with a lovely glassy smoothness that keeps it from being harsh or tizzy. The C12 VR is a great choice on any acoustic string instrument, cymbal-focused overheads, bass cabinet, and of course, vocals of all types. Overall, I find the AKG C12 VR is European craftsmanship at its sonic best and a seriously stunning mic that could command pride of place in any studio, effortlessly tackling a host of diverse studio tasks for years to come. Of course, the $20,000 question, if you will, is how does the C12 VR compare to an original? To answer that question, we sent the mic to our associate editor, Alex Hawley, who works at Coop Studios in Boulder, Colorado, where they happen to have a beautifully restored vintage C12. In our original Family of Roundup, Alex compared both mics side by side on acoustic guitar and vocals. His thoughts were as follows. On vocals, I initially struggled to distinguish between the two mics in a blind test. Both models offer rich, full-bodied tones with that legendary, clear, smooth top-end response. The lows and mid-range sounded nearly identical to my ears, with only a minor variance in the top end. I found the C12 VR to be a touch warmer than the vintage model. That airy, open quality above the sibilance range that a C12 is known for was slightly less present. On the plus side, the C12 VR model has a significantly lower noise floor than its vintage sibling which was the most consistent clue during the blind tests. For his acoustic guitar tests with a 1972 Gibson SJN, Alex actually sent us the acoustic guitar files so we can compare for ourselves. Let's take a listen.
So, what do you think? In the initial roundup, Alex had this to say. He found that they both offered a vibrant flavor throughout the spectrum with a slightly more open top end for the vintage model. Again, the lows and mid-range detail were indistinguishable. Now we come to my favorite part of our microphone video reviews. How do the mics sound? In this case, how do the C-Series mics compare to each other? To find out, musicians Alan Kellner and Matthew Louts put together a short verse and chorus so we can hear how they compare side by side. I joined in on percussion. As the song plays, I'm going to cycle through the mics with no EQ and no compression so you can check out the similarities and the differences. some time to figure out what the world looks like from the clouds the air gets thin but then you see there's nothing to the memory So, what'd you think? Let me know in the comments below. Overall, I enjoyed both the diversity and the differences, as well as the familial similarities between the microphones. If you'd like to know more of my thoughts on each mic, check out our Family of AKG C-Series Microphones Compared in the March 2023 issue of Recording Magazine. Of course, you should also stop by akg.com, where you can check out specs and further information on each mic, and you can even download the manual for each model. I also need to give a special thank you to our friends at Vintage King who graciously let us use the photos of the rare early vintage AKG mics at the start of this video. If you'd like to seek out a vintage AKG microphone for your own, VintageKing.com is a great place to start. If you enjoyed this video review, be sure to give us the thumbs up below, and better yet, subscribe to Recording's YouTube channel for more video reviews, product comparisons, how-to videos, and more. Then stop by recordingmag.com for the best in all things recording, where you can subscribe to our print publication, which is now in its 36th year. We'll see you soon.